Hi, this is Greg Benz with a quick video case study of how we can turn this image over to this final image here. And this is uh, this is the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. I love the the way this image looked uh, straight out of the camera, out of the raw. It looks pretty good to me. But a few things I want to be doing here with my luminosity masks want to be really guiding the viewer's eyes down here. That's going to be dominating everything I'm doing. The, the vision I have for this image really is using these leading lines to bring your eyes in here. And so I want to strengthen up this leading line here with the concrete. I want to bring down some of this hot metal here. It's kind of distracting. It's competing for the attention down here. Same with the blue tones here. I want to get this back to a gold, that reflection of the sky with the blue there. Um, just throws the image off a little bit for me. And then this light box here, while I love it, and I think it really adds to the image, is probably a little bit too saturated, a little bit too hot. And if we tone that down some, that will just help guide the viewer's eyes to a single location, which I always like having a more simple composition. I think that strengthens the image. So that's where we're gonna try and go with this. So again, we're, we're headed towards this, and I'm gonna simply step through how we got there. So we're not going to use the luminosity mask in this demo, but I'm just going to show you quickly how you can use my actions in Photoshop to create all the various different levels of masks here. For example, the lights mask getting progressively more selective or the darks mask selective more to the shadows, etc. Um, so we're not going to use those uh, here. I'm just going to show you how I actually built the image, but just want to help you understand that's how I created these selections. So in my demo here, I'm just going to kind of walk stepwise through what I got. I'm going to get rid of my final adjustments here. That was just to show you the image. So the first thing I did is I wanted to get rid of this blue tone here. And to do that, I'm just going to simply paint with a, another color here. So we can use the eyedropper and just pick up a color. And you'll see it's been loaded. And I just paint as you see here. And this is the actual painted selection I had here. You can see. This has all been painted here. I set this layer to hue. So I'm simply taking the color or the hue of this tone and applying it to the underlying image, which as you can see here, knocks down that blue. And we could even paint a little bit more to see if that takes it a little bit further. I think I've probably taken it to about its limits, but um, that I think is a really nice first step to take that blue out of the image. So next, want to adjust the concrete here. I loaded up a lights one mask, which is this mask here. And you can always see your masks by alt clicking on them. That's the quick way to visualize what's being selected. And I applied a curves adjustment here, which you can see here is pretty steep curve to increase contrast. So I'm going to turn this on here and you see it's applied to the entire image. And while it looks really good in the concrete down here, I actually don't like what it did up above. And so we can get rid of that by putting a mask on a group. So the curves layer is inside of a group and we masked it. And I've got the mask off. That's why the red X there, when I turn it on, you'll see that it no longer impacts the top of the image. It's simply impacting the bottom of the image here. And this is what this mask looks like. So I blacked out these areas where I didn't want to apply this underlying curves mask. So that's my concrete adjustment. I did spill a little bit over to the sides here, but I liked how that looked, so I left it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this group. The next layer here, I've got a um, lights five here, which is to select this area up above with this hot metal and darken it down. And you can see that it's very selective to the metal and a few areas here that we're gonna mask out. Um, and I've got my curve again is a very steep curve to darken that down and here you can see that adjustment somewhat subtle but you can see here that this is getting a shade darker which I think really helps keep this from being too distracting but it is applying in other areas such as this box here is getting a little too yellow and so we're gonna apply a mask to it and I'm gonna shift click my mask which is the way you always turn this on and off you can see here that it's turning off the adjustment in these areas that are masked out. So this mask is essentially masking in the areas I want. And between you know masking out like I did in the previous and masking in here, my rule of thumb is if I wanna keep most of the adjustment, I just mask out what I don't want. And if I just wanna 
add one little piece of the image, I'm gonna mask it in. So I'll start with you know, white or black as needed and paint the opposite color to get me the, the mask I want. So again, I'm masking the mask by using this curves layer inside of a group with a mask applied to the group. So this mask will apply this mask where it's selected. So kind of a complex idea, but this is essentially our adjustment and this localizes that adjustment, if you will. And then the next layer here, I wanna desaturate this box and this is obviously a brighter area. So I used a lights two, it's fairly selective to this area, it gets the whole box, doesn't get the surrounding areas here. It has a lot of collateral areas that are selected so I'm gonna to need to mask that out with this mask. But first we'll just turn this on so you can see that it's really taking the yellow out of this light box here. Now it is impacting some other areas here, pretty subtle, but um, I just want to make sure it only hits the areas I want to adjust here, which are the light box and it's where it's hitting down below. So I'm going to turn on this mask and this will show you I masked in just the light box and where it was hitting the ground beneath. So it's just selectively changing the saturation on those areas. So again, this is a desaturation layer. Sorry, I didn't even show that. Uh, minus 61 here. Desaturating applied to these lights here to get that result. And so now we've adjusted the tones, I think as far as we need to with luminosity masking, um, but we wanna add a vignette to really strengthen how the viewer's eyes get in the center here. So this is the vignette I added and I'll actually just show you how I create that. So if we create a new layer here, oops, can't type. And a very simple way to go about creating your vignette, use the lasso tool and select the rough shape you want. So I want a vignette in here with a little bit of a leading line, not too much of this concrete to the side here. And I've selected in this area here, I wanna select the area outside of it and make it black. So I'm gonna invert my selection. And I don't want this to be a simple, uh, you know, hard transition. I wanna feather that. So I'm gonna go and modify my selection with a feather. 100 pixels is great. So we've softened up this transition and we will simply use G for the gradient tool, go to our default black color, turn on that there and you can see this vignette is a very hard vignette here, very dark. So we simply need to bring the opacity down quite a bit here. Um, and it looks like somewhere down in the 20% range is getting me what I need and you can see here some areas that are lighter and if I wanted to continue refining this mask to really hone in the lines there, but it gives you a great idea of how the vignette can really draw the viewer, viewer's eye. So let's, let's try that one more time, just kind of stepping through this here. So get rid of this distraction. So we first started by, uh, sorry, let me turn this off again here. Started first by adding this hue overlay which got rid of that blue. Then we masked the concrete here using a light one mask and grouped that mask to block out that adjustment in other areas. Then we applied a curves adjustment with a lights five mask to darken up above here and masked that into just this area. Then we wanted to desaturate, so we took a saturation layer brought it down, use a lights two mask on that, and then mask that mask just to hit the areas we wanted to desaturate and finished off with a vignette, which gives us this nice overall final result.